Hi Harbour Kids, hope you're all really well and that you've been enjoying this lovely sunshine. Today is Good Friday, so we are going to be reading you the Easter story. You might see some faces you recognise as there's lots of the different helpers and leaders of Harbour Kids reading it to you. Let's go to Jerusalem, said Jesus to his friends. I have something important to do there. So they went. And when they could just see the city from a nearby hillside, Jesus said, let's have a parade. Jesus' friends were surprised. A parade? They wondered, why parade? But no one said anything, because Jesus was already busy giving instructions. I want two of you to borrow a donkey he said. Tell the owner that I need it. He will understand. When the two friends returned with the donkey, Jesus hopped on its back, gently nudged its sides and started down the hill. His friends followed close behind. Hooray for Jesus, they shouted. Jesus is the king. Down, down, down they rode towards the city gate. And the closer they got, the more people joined them. It's Jesus the teacher, someone called. It's Jesus the healer, called someone else. Three cheers for Jesus, called one and all. Soon there were people everywhere, marching along with the parade and shouting from the roadside. Some took off their coats and laid them in front of the donkey. Others cut palm branches from the trees and waved them about. There were hundreds, maybe thousands, clapping and dancing and shouting their way through the city gates. Everyone was happy. Well, almost everyone. Some of the religious leaders didn't like Jesus. They were jealous because the ordinary people were fond of him. And when they saw the parade, they frowned. Wait a minute, they called. You can't have a parade here. Tell your friends to be quiet, Jesus. But Jesus just laughed. Tell them to be quiet? Impossible. Then he turned to look at the crowd. Can't you see, he said, there is so much happiness here that even if I could make the people quiet, the stones in the street would jump up and shout for joy. Jesus knew, but not everyone liked him. He knew that the leaders were, were angry with him. In fact, they were so angry but, and so jealous they wanted to kill him. And Jesus knew that too. But Jesus still had his special friends. They had been friends for a long, long time. They traveled with Jesus and Jesus taught them many things. One night, they all got together for dinner. While they were eating, Jesus got up. He put a towel on like an apron and poured water into a large bowl. Then he began to wash his, feet, the, his friend's feet. When Jesus got to Peter's feet, Peter said, I cannot let you wash my feet. If you don't let me wash your feet, you can't follow me, said Jesus. In that case, said Peter, wash my hands and my head too. After Jesus washed his friend's feet, he asked, do you understand what I did? I showed you how to be kind to each other. I am your Lord and teacher. If I can be kind and help you, then you can be kind and help each other. Jesus knew he would not be with them much longer. He was going to die. The friends could see that something was wrong. Jesus looked so sad. One of you is going to betray me, he said at last. They were stunned. No one said anything for a minute. Then John, who was next to him, whispered to Jesus, Who is it? The one to whom I give this piece of bread dipped in the sauce, Jesus answered, and he gave it to Judas. Go and do what you have to do, Jesus said to him. So Judas went out into the dark night. Jesus talked a lot that evening and his friends never forgot his words. He told them how much he loved them, so much he was going to die for them. I won't leave you on your own, he said. God will send his spirit to be with you and help you always. I am going back to God to get a place ready for you. Then I will come and take you to be with me. Don't worry and don't be afraid. Jesus took a loaf of bread, thanked God for the food and shared it round. This is my body, he said. I am going to be broken like this bread to die and I will be dying for you. Then he took a cup of wine, 
gave God thanks and they all shared it. This is my blood poured out for many people. My death will seal the new peace between God and his people. When the meal was over, they left the house and walked to an orchard of olive trees called Gethsemane. Jesus and his disciples went to a garden called Gethsemane. It was getting to be quite late in the evening, so everyone was whispering. Jesus was especially quiet and walked a bit ahead of the rest of the group. He looked as if he was sad and upset about something, and he stopped, whispered to some of the disciples, Sit here while I pray. Then, with Peter, James and John, he walked just a little bit further and told them, My heart feels heavy and I feel very sad. Please stay here and keep watch. I need some company close by. The disciples looked at each other. They had never seen Jesus like this before. Then Jesus walked a bit further by himself next to a big tree. He knelt down with, with his face to the ground and began to talk to God. He prayed, My father, I know that I'm about to go through some horrible things. I wish I wouldn't have to, but it doesn't matter what I want. I will do whatever you want. When he had finished praying, he went back to where the disciples were to find that they had fallen asleep on the ground. Jesus woke them and said, and said to them, couldn't you have stayed awake with me for just a little while? You should also pray that you will continue to do what God wants. The disciples felt bad and tried to keep their eyes open, but when they started praying, they fell asleep. Two more times Jesus went off to pray the same prayer as before and when he was finished he came back to his friends, disappointed to find that they had fallen asleep once again. The third time Jesus woke them saying, are you sleeping again? Enough, it's time to go. Here comes the man who is about me to give me up to the people who want to hurt me. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the Jesus' disciples, was coming towards them. He was followed by a large crowd of people who were carrying swords and clubs. Judas walked right up to Jesus and gave him a kiss on the cheek. This was the sign to the chief priests that this was Jesus and that he was the man they wanted to arrest. Jesus let them take him. But one of the disciples didn't like what was happening. He wanted to stick up for Jesus. He took out his sword and cut off the ear of a chief priest. Before the situation got more out of hand, Jesus spoke firmly, Enough! He reached up to the man whose ear had been hurt and healed it instantly. Jesus spoke to all of those around him. If I wanted, I could pray to my father for help. He would send angels to protect me and stop this. However, I know this needs to happen to finish what he says in the Bible. The disciples did not know what to do. They were afraid they might be arrested for bringing with Jesus. They quickly retreated, leaving Jesus to be arrested alone. Jesus. Meanwhile, Peter was in the courtyard below. One of the servant girls who worked for the high priest came by and noticed Peter warmed himself at the fire. She looked at him closely and said, you are one of those with Jesus Nazareth. But Peter denied it. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. And he went out into the entryway. Just then the rooster crowed. Then the servant girl saw him standing there. She began telling the others, this man is definitely one of them. But Peter denied it again. A little time later, some of the bystanders confronted Peter and said, you must be one of them because you are a Galilean. And Peter swore, a curse on me if I am lying, I don't know this man that you're talking about. And immediately the rooster crowed a second time. Suddenly, Jesus' words flashed through Peter's mind. Before the rooster crows twice, you will deny three times that you even know me. And he broke down and wept. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to the house of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of the law and the elders had gathered together. Peter followed from a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest's house. He went into the courtyard and sat down with the guards to see how it would all come out. The 
chief priests and the whole council tried to find some false evidence against Jesus to put him to death, but they could not find any, even though many people came forward and told lies about him. Finally, two men stepped up and said, This man said, I'm able to tear down God's temple and three days later build it up again. The high priest stood up and said to Jesus, Have you no answer to give to this accusation against you? But Jesus kept quiet. Again the high priest spoke to him. In the name of the living God, I now put you on oath. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus answered him, So you say, but I tell all of you, from this time on you will see the Son of Man sitting on the right of the Almighty coming on the clouds of heaven. At this the high priest tore his clothes. Blasphemy! We don't need any more witnesses. You have just heard his blasphemy. What do you think? They answered, He is guilty and must die. Then they spat in his face and beat him. And those who slapped him said, Prophesy for us, Messiah. Guess who hit you? They took the cross necks made of heavy wood and they laid it on his back. Move along, they shouted, and they led him through the city. Some people cried when they saw him, others cheered, but all of them followed as they lugged the cross through the city gates and up a nearby hill. When they got to the top, they laid Jesus on the cross and nailed him to it. It hurt so much. Then they raised the cross so that everybody could see, and they left him there to die. A thief hanging next to him was afraid, but Jesus talked to him and helped him feel much better. Jesus' mother was there too, standing in the crowd. So Jesus called one of his friends. Take care of her for me, will you, John? She's your mother now. But most of the faces in the crowd were not kind. You save other people, someone laughed. Why can't you save yourself? Jesus knew why. It wasn't because his enemies had won. It was because God wanted him there to take away all the bad things that the world had done. Soon the sky grew dark and the earth shook. It was as if God's own heart was breaking. And then it happened. It's done. Jesus whispered, and in the sadness and in the dark, he died. It was Sunday morning, just before dawn. Everything was still. Then, as the first light touched the sky, the ground trembled and shook. An angel came and rolled away the stone that sealed the tomb. The guards were so frightened they ran off. When the women came, bringing their spices, the grave was open and the body had gone. The angel spoke to them. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you were looking for Jesus, but he's not here. He's alive from the dead. Look, this is where his body was. Hurry and tell his friends, you will see him again soon. Jesus' friends refused to believe the women's story. They thought they were imagining things. But Peter and John went to the grave to see for themselves. John ran faster than Peter and got there first. He looked inside the grave, but didn't go in. Then Peter arrived and they both went in. They saw the cloths which had bound the body, lying untouched, with the cloth that had wrapped Jesus' head just a neck space away. John knew at once that no one could have stolen the body. What the women had said was true. Jesus was alive from the dead. The two men went home, but Mary Magdalene, who had followed them, stayed. She stood there, crying. She could not understand what had happened. Then she caught sight of a man she thought was the gardener. If you've taken him away, she said, please tell me where to find him. She did not know she was talking to Jesus. Then Jesus said, Mary. And at once she knew who it was. Joy flooded through her. Tell my friends you have seen me, Jesus said.
We hope you enjoyed listening to our Easter story. And we hope from our Harbour Kids team that you have a really good Easter. Happy Easter, everybody. Have a very happy Easter, Harbour Kids. See you next time. Everyone at Harbour Kids, a very happy Easter. Stay safe and look forward to seeing you soon. Bye. Easter, guys. Have fun. Happy Easter, everybody. We miss you and we can't wait to see you again. We just wanted to wish you a very, very happy Easter. Hi, Harbour Kids. Have an exciting Easter. Bye. Happy Easter, Harbour Kids. Kids. From Nikki. Kat.